Echo leads his pod back to Earth and swims happily in the ocean. His pod mates thank him and say songs will be sung of him throughout the ocean, kind of like Klingon operas. Koi kelet pook lod, koi pook bet poo, yapo mapo jeshu me, say machu me And now the continuation. Hey, it's Janelle Waz and welcome back to another episode of Waz Reviews. Echo the Dolphin, the game where you play as a dolphin trying to save his family who is abducted by aliens with the help of a little time travel. And if that didn't sound crazy enough, there was a sequel that also involved aliens and time travel, and alternate realities. It's like watching an episode of Star Trek Voyager, only with dolphins. This game is especially special to me because not only was it my introduction to the Echo the Dolphin franchise, as small a franchise as it is, but it was also my first video game, and probably the reason why I love sci-fi and dolphins so much. Yes, I do have a bias with this game, but that doesn't mean I can't give this game a fair review. So continuing off my review of the first Echo game, let's dive right in and see what Echo the Dolphin 2 The Tides of Time has to offer. But was I barely got through Echo 1, if at all. Why should I check out Echo 2? Well, for one thing, in my opinion, Echo 2 is a much easier game. Granted, there's a hard mode included, which I'm attempting to go through in my Waz Plays video. Link in the description below if you want to check it out. But the game on normal mode, which is what I played for this video, is much easier than Echo 1. The levels are easier to solve, the game physics are much improved, and it doesn't have anything even remotely close to the difficulty of Welcome to the Machine. Ooh, I still shudder when I think of that level. And if you're worried about playing a sequel before playing the first game, don't worry, that's exactly what I did growing up, and the game even gives you a little recap of the ending of the previous game. But if you're concerned, then why not check out my review of the first Echo game to get you up to speed? Let's start with the intro, which admittedly I usually skip. Unlike the first game, Tides of Time has an intro spelled out in the night sky. See, Disney? Echo isn't a part of the main Star Wars trilogy, and it gets an opening crawl. Echo has returned to Earth safely with his pod. Yeah, we, we already saw that. Songs that praise Echo throughout the ocean. Echo is a hero. He saved the Earth and he destroyed the evil Vortex. Or so he thought. Basically, the Vortex Queen can't accept that she was owned by a dolphin within a six-hour playthrough, which I felt my sanity slowly slipping away from me. So she followed Echo to Earth to start a new hive. Because why waste resources on a long tube to siphon some food when you can just go to the source? It's like setting up your living room inside Walmart. This is where Tides of Time begins, and it starts out pretty uneventful. Echo is swimming peacefully with his pod, where they give him helpful pieces of advice, like charge small fish to feed and gain strength. Your powers are so strange. How can you stay beneath the waves so long without air? That's right, left over from the last game is Echo's ability to swim without surfacing for air. Enjoy it while it lasts. Echo, with his data in Star Trek Insurrection powers, decides to travel around. Why? Because if there's going to be another storm, he's not going to be here for it. Nah, that can't be it. He's been jumping around all day and not a vortex to be seen. It's probably because this dolphin refuses to move unless he tells you about these Atlantean teleport rings that will take you great distances. And this is one of the new features of this game that I absolutely love. Sega Genesis games are known for being mostly 2D. You go left, you go right, you go up, you go down. But here you're going forward. It's really neat. The object here is to swim or jump through the rings until you get to the next level. You're only allowed to miss five rings, so be careful. I usually have trouble with the higher ring, which causes the right charge jump timing. But still, there's nothing more satisfying than this sound. And after passing through how many rings, we end up in Crystal Springs, which sounds more like a water bottle brand. Note the return of that lovely Sega Genesis password system. Only the description that was present in the first game is no longer there. Eh, I can live with that. Follow me, Echo. There's something strange below. Alright. What? It's just a glyph. Apparently this glyph needs other glyphs to work, so you have to sonar other glyphs around the area and bring them back to the first glyph. 
It's easy except for this one by a dolphin where if you aren't at the right angle, we'll mess up your rhythm by shouting, DO IT! And then the glyphs combine to form one glyph. This process is never repeated in the game again. Use this song to shatter the stone. The Fault Zone. Such a mournful song, such a mournful place. CRABS! Yeah, I hated the crabs in the first game and I hate them here too. Luckily, Echo Screams of Pain is replaced by a little whimper. Much less painful to the ears. So you're swimming along, minding your business. What the hell was that? My air meter is back! You have lost the power that the asteroid has given you. Now you must surface for air. Oh, come on! I wasn't even carelessly jumping this time. I was minding my own business. The asteroid is dead? I take one road trip and everything goes to sh We feel the presence of the vortex kind. Oh, great. Well, I guess we're all screwed then. Um, what? I am Trelia, and you are my ancestor. So, temporal violations run in the family, I guess. Seventeen separate temporal violations, the biggest file on record. I am here to take you to my present. Oh yeah, time travel again! I still love the time travel sequences. The song is updated, but it still maintains that same mystery as the first game. Speaking of the soundtrack of this game, I love it. Maybe it's because I grew up with this game, but the Tides of Time Genesis soundtrack is one of my favorite video game soundtracks. It's head and shoulders above the original with updated sounds and, in my opinion, better melodies. However, where I gushed about the Sega CD soundtrack for the original game, the Tides of Time Sega CD soundtrack is just... okay. I don't hate it, but it just doesn't have the emotion of the first game's Sega CD soundtrack. I don't know, maybe it's because I thought the first game's Genesis soundtrack was just okay, so the Sega CD sounded really good. But here, I absolutely love the Genesis soundtrack for Tides of Time, and the Sega CD version isn't it. Back to the game. So we're in the good future, where the future's so bright that Echo's gotta wear shades. Tralia basically dumps you in the middle of her present and then bolts. What's the matter, youngin? You don't want to spend time with Grandpa? The future looks much like Echo's present, only with new plant growth, different sea life, skyways, and flying dolphins! They can even carry Echo with their minds! Professor X has nothing on future dolphins! Most of these levels takes place in the sea, but there are a few that take place in the skyways. The best way I can describe it is that they're like water tubes, only you can breathe in them. And yes, it's possible to fall out of them and die! Yeah, the Echo Screams of Pain aren't exactly absent from Tides of Time, but luckily they're only when Echo dies, so you're not constantly being hit with. The first Skyway level is Sky Tides, and while it is auto-scrolling, it's easy enough to memorize. Oh boy. Look, I love the look of this level. I even like the song. However, as a kid, this level tripped me up so many times. I mean, I'm at the point where I could do this level in about a minute, but beforehand, it was a tough one. You're swimming along the skyway of life and jellyfish. And this jellyfish can throw down, literally. If you happen to fall during this level, rather than dying, you have to repeat the last two levels. The best advice I can give for this level is to do it as quickly as you can. It might involve a little memorization and practice, but it's one of those levels you either do it very quickly, or take forever and get tossed out of the sky. Did you like flying through the sky? Well, how about flying through the sky with bubbles? That's right, jump into the air, sonar some bubbles, and hope you reach the nearby floating pool of water it chucks you at. <laughs> I'm stuck! Did you have fun with that? How about turning into a bird and having another bird knock you back into the water? 
Admittedly, the Metasphere is an interesting concept, and you use it at different points in the game to change into different animals, but the bird one is just the worst. Giant worm! Well, one worm, but still, I have to deal with a giant worm! Thank you! I said, thank you. Asteroid, you're alive! Hello, my little singer! Hello! It's good to see you and feel your thoughts after so long. That's not what you said when I first met you, and that was 55 million years ago. For those who skip the intro to the game, like I do most of the time, the asteroid tells you that the Vortex Queen followed you to Earth after saving your pod, and that you have to return to your time to stop her. Couldn't just let Trelia tell me that? You had to bring me all the way to the future for that? This meeting could have been an email. There are two possible futures for Earth, and only you can prevent the Dark Vortex future. You are the stone that split the stream of time in two. So... What you're saying is that if I wasn't sent into the past in the last game, TWICE, that this probably wouldn't be happening. That the very act of time travel creates two realities in which you did and did not go back in time. But if this happened twice, there are at least four alternate timelines due to the events of Echo 1. For all we know, we could be living in an alternate timeline right now. And Echo, you must save my life! I will show you my memories. Oh, well, at least you brought me here for something! So here's the asteroid. Hanging, chillin', what the hell? I see you haven't grown your jaw back yet. Well, looks like we got the whole thing on video. Let's get the warrant for the Vortex Queen's arrest. Okay, this next part requires concentration and focus. And we're going back in time again. That's another two alternate realities created. Who is to say that this history is any less proper than the other? Horrible creatures attacked my pod! I swam away with the little ones, and now they are lost! Please, find them! Uh, lady, I'm kind of on a mission here to save Earth. I can't just- oh, fine. You can expect help from the orca kind on your journey! Thanks. I guess- Hey, where are you going? I just spent half a level finding you! Get back here! Well, hope you can get back home from here. Follow me, Echo. Oh, not this again. Alright, let me take a moment here. I love dolphins. I really do. This dolphin, on the other hand, is a smug little jerk that makes you go around in circles, jump over islands at his pace, and if you fall behind and have to go back to the starting point, he gives you these really smug comments. Nice to meet you again. We shall try for the fourth time. And beyond that, it only gets worse and more smug. And then when you're done following him, he just gives you a song to shatter some stones. Why couldn't you just give it to me beforehand? Hey, who turned off all the lights? Oh no. Oh no. Vortex creatures attacked my pod! Yeah, okay. Alright, get over here. Thank you, Echo! Now my child is safe! Yeah. I have seen the death of the asteroid! Listen to my memories! Well, I already watched- Okay, I guess we're doing this. Well, that's different. Oh, real mature lady! So, the asteroid's globes have been scattered around, and now we have to find them. Yeah, that's right, this game turns into a giant fetch quest. Oh, hell no! <sighs> Need I remind you all that this is because Echo stole the asteroid's globe in the past? Well, time to start the search for the asteroid's globes. 
It's kind of like Star Trek 3 in that you have to rebuild Spock, I mean the asteroid. Hey, hey, buddy, can you move? I'm kind of in the middle of saving the world. GIVE ME A FISH! Guy, I, I don't think you heard me. I'm trying to say, GIVE ME A FISH! Ugh, <sighs> fine. Come on, buddy, move towards the dolphin. That's right. Okay, how did I get here? Where am I exactly? Why does this look nothing like anywhere I've been before? Oh, I'm fighting a dragon. Okay, how? Find globes. Can you elaborate this a little bit? Find globes. Okay, okay. It's just I'm always finding globes for you. The next set of levels involves collecting the asteroid's globes. You can only collect globes two at a time, but I do like the way they orbit Echo when he finds them. I suppose it makes sense given the asteroid's helix nature, but I like it. These levels also involve constantly running into glyphs telling you that you shall not pass unless you rebuild the asteroid. I guess it makes the game easier to manage and lessens the area you have to search, but it's especially difficult in the level of the eye where you have access to almost all the glyphs and have to manually figure out which glyph you can pass because the game gives you no direction in this level. As you collect globes though, the asteroid gives you little pieces of information. I mean, it's not a lot of information, but you do get more of the story as you go along. Basically, the Vortex Queen knew the asteroid gave Echo the power to defeat her, so she knew where to attack first before starting up a new hive on Earth. You need to complete the entire asteroid, or you can't get your powers back to defeat her again. The asteroid's final pair of globes, however, is in the Dark Vortex future. And there's no way to get there since the time machine at Atlantis only goes back in time. So what's the point? No way to get the final pair, right? Even if we found the other pairs, Earth is still screwed, right? But there's no time to talk that way, that's not the Echo way. After the eye is big water, and I just want to say that I kinda love this level. It's not that much goes on in this level, it's mostly swim to the front of this whale pod, ask the whale leader to smash some rocks for you so you can get a globe, and add a pair to the asteroid. But I love the song in this level, I love seeing the pod of whales. Admiral, there be whales here! I love that there are no enemies. Maybe that's why I loved this level as a kid so much. It was easy. As an adult, I'm still fond of this level, but I also recognize it as filler. In fact, a lot of these globe levels feel like padding. Tides of Time is a longer game than the original, and I didn't get as strong a sense that the levels in the original were filler. Sure, there were the two fetch quest levels in a row, but that was about it. These levels just feel like they're padding out the story. Don't get me wrong, a lot of these levels are very visually and musically pleasing, and while it is cool that you can turn into a shark at one point, these levels just don't feel necessary for the plot other than collecting globes. Ah oh, well, let's keep collecting those globes. The queen has knowledge of the time machine! Oh, great. Oh, great. Lunar Bay. This is the first level with very heavy alien influences. There are weird eels swimming around, these spiny alien looking rock things, and we see a new type of vortex drone. While some areas of the game certainly felt different from home bay, this is the level where I realized I wasn't in Kansas anymore. This is vortex territory. Oh crap. Um, what? Let's think about this for a second. Two Vortex drones appear out of nowhere to take Echo into the Vortex future at the cost of their own lives. But why? If Echo stayed in the present, that's it. He can't rebuild the asteroid without the final pair of globes. The Vortex future is secured. But by taking Echo into the future, the Vortex shot themselves in the foot. They're opening the possibility up that Echo retrieves the final globe pair, rebuilds the asteroid, and defeats the Vortex Queen. But now we're in the Vortex future, presumably Earth, although it's never stated. All the water is gone except for Vortex waterway tubes built into the sky, which kinda reminds me of Bespin in Star Wars for some reason. A lot of this level is just Echo flailing around, jumping from tube to tube, avoiding massive falls into a bottomless abyss. And I suppose I should mention a massive improvement from the first game, the jumping mechanics. Tides of Time implemented rubber dolphin physics where Echo bounces off surfaces rather than fall back where he came from. 
Jumping in this game is highly satisfying, even if some of the sound effects make me cringe a little. Nevertheless, I'm not a big fan of these levels in the Vortex Future. I know this game pretty well, but these levels involve me mostly winging it, getting lost, or just taking leaps of faith into the abyss. There are checkpoint glyphs around, but they don't make this section of the game any less aggravating. I sure miss that giant jellyfish in the sky. Globe holder? This must be the place! The final pair of the asteroid's globes are being held within a giant globe. Oh, Vortex Queen, you're so clever. But not as clever as Echo. I have arrived. You amaze me again, little one. Little one? You called me that when I was five. Now that I am whole again, I can give you the power you need to stop the Vortex Queen and... And this is just like the last time. And I hope you don't lose your sanity and welcome to the machine again. Go now and and stop the Vortex Menace. There goes the asteroid repeating words again. But goodbye, air meter! Echo's breathing freely underwater now. Well, at least now the other dolphins are helping. What was stopping them before? I have no idea. I mean, sure, it was nice some of them showed me where the next level was, but what would have really helped is someone to keep the aliens occupied. But whatever, they're doing that. We're breaking into the vortex hive again. Oh, for crying out loud! What is with the Vortex and auto-scrolling mazes? It's like they know my one weakness or something. Luckily, this isn't nearly as bad as Welcome to the Machine, and the song that plays is one of my favorites in the game. Except when you pause and it switches to one of my least favorite songs in the game. But yeah, it's frequent sonaring and quick thinking, but it's a lot easier and shorter. Honestly, I prefer having more levels that are a lot easier rather than less levels that are harder. Hey, remember me? I'm back! So the Vortex Queen is looking different. Like, is this even the same lady? I prefer this fight to the one in the first game. While you do have to get close to the Vortex Queen to attack her, she doesn't feel as massive as she did in the first game. There's a beam you have to avoid or it'll slow you down, but it's not so bad. If you get eaten in this fight, you do have to do a separate level. However, it's not nearly as bad as Welcome to the Machine. You're turned into a vortex drone with bubble attack powers and make your way through a maze at your own pace. It's not my favorite, but after that level, I can't complain. And then you get spit out as a dolphin. All right, let's finish this. Let's show this prehistoric <laughs> how we do things downtown. Um, okay. But but look, the end sequence! Dolphins and whales swimming together in harmony, dolphins happily jumping out of the water, and a choreographed dance sequence. And your podmates thank you. Again. Once again, you are the hero of the sea. You have saved your kind. You have saved the asteroid. And you have saved Earth's future. Songs of your courage will echo in the waters of Earth forever. I see Echo's earned himself another Klingon opera. Oh, my cool. Oh, my car. Reshav tak yak bo edge gok ba. Thanks for playing Echo, Echo, Echo. What's this? The game is still playing. Am I back at the beginning? Well, yes, but no. You're back at home bay, and the level plays out roughly the same. Swim to the teleport ring, do a much harder swim sequence, but rather than ending up at Crystal Springs again, we go right into the epilogue. And no, this isn't the last level, there's still a couple more. We talk with the asteroid again. You saved Earth's future and the natural flow of the stream of time. So if temporal investigations can lay off me, okay? The asteroid provides more of an explanation to all the time shenanigans we've gone through, which I basically covered before. 
But to prevent this from happening again, the Astray asks Echo to go to Atlantis and destroy the time machine. Not disarm it so we can at least keep it for historical purposes, destroy it. When you do this, you will swim happy again and life on Earth will go on. Well, when you put it that way. We've done our bit for King and Country. Okay, we're in the home stretch now, Atlantis. I do like the look of Atlantis in this game. For one thing, it's less booby trapped than in the original game, which is a win for me. It doesn't look exactly like the Atlantis in the first game, but I have to say, I dig the updated look. We make our way through Atlantis and... Not this sh again! You know, if a dolphin was this lazy in real life, he wouldn't have survived. We also get turned into a school of fish that random dolphins are charging at. Uh, excuse me? Do you know who I am? I'm the one who saved the entire planet, thank you. Finally, the Echo has come back to the city of forever. However, this looks nothing like the city of forever in the last game. I'm probably in a different neighborhood. Specifically, Little Vortex. That's right, the entire level is filled with Vortex larva. And yes, this is what the Vortex Queen turned into post-fight. While avoiding the larva and using them to open doors, Echo finally reaches the time machine. All right, Echo, just destroy the time machine and you can retire. <laughs> I I'm sorry. What? You just created two more alternate realities. What's wrong with you? The man was a menace. We turn back to the sky as we see fireworks and Echo's name spelled out in the stars as the epilogue rolls. Basically, the Vortex Queen already escaped into Earth's past, but because she cannot rule over the creatures of the past, she just integrates with the life cycle of Earth. I've read in extra materials for the game that this is where arthropods come from. So basically, we have the Vortex to think for this. Oh, well, not too bad. As for Echo, instead of destroying the time machine, he uses it and disappears into the tides of time. And that's it. That's the ending. A cliffhanger. A cliffhanger I've been waiting to see resolved for practically my entire life. I'm still waiting, Sega! From what I understand, a sequel was planned and scrapped that would have dealt with Echo joining the Atlanteans. In fact, the game gives you a secret password to put into the next game, and it would tell the next game how you played this game. But alas, we got Echo Jr. instead. We also got Defender of the Future, but that's a completely different storyline and has nothing to do with this game. But that's Echo the Dolphin 2, The Tides of Time. So, how well does it hold up? The controls are the same as the first game. Directional button to point where you want Echo to go, hold the directional button to swim, A to sonar, B to charge, C to swim fast, the usual. A marked improvement in this game over the last is the physics. Rubber Dolphin physics for the win. 5 out of 5. This game plays wonderfully. Maybe it's just the nostalgia talking, but the game's ambiance is top notch. The graphics are much improved from the first game, the soundtrack feels less like it comes out of an 8-bit game. In my opinion, this is one of the best looking games on the Genesis. It's colorful, the shading looks great, and the levels are visually interesting and offer a wide range of scenes. 5 out of 5. Job well done. The game's story. I have to say that the first game probably has the better story. Don't get me wrong, I still like this game's story, but it seems like there are some repeated tropes. In other words, the asteroid's globes, Echo getting his powers back, stuff like that. However, I do appreciate that it dives into the consequences of Echo's actions from the first game. He traveled back in time, and that created alternate futures. Ah, well. You're getting a 4 out of 5 tides of time, it's enough to hold the game together. Like the first game, Echo doesn't have that steep of a learning curve. The controls are easy to learn, and while there are some frustrating moments, they're not impossible to overcome. I always recommend using your sonar map to figure out where to go next, which is much bigger in this game than the last, making things even easier. 4 out of 5. I'm probably just a tad biased in the replayability in this game because I always come back to Tides of Time. I've been coming back to this game my entire life, so of course I'm going to rate it highly. I can't even think of any levels that seriously put me off from replaying this game. Some annoying levels, sure, but nothing like Welcome to the Machine. 5 out of 5. That leaves Echo 2 with a 23 out of 25, or 92%. I love this game, and it was my first video game, so it's no surprise that it scores very highly in my review. 
It's a much more accessible game than the first one. It's easier, but still challenging. It's nicer to look at and to listen to. And it plays a lot nicer. It's not a perfect game, because nothing is. The story has a few issues, and there are levels in the game that mostly pad the game out. But nevertheless, this is one of my favorite games. Maybe it won't appeal to everyone, but to me, this is a special game. And I'm still waiting on that sequel, Sega! So what do you think? Did you play Echo the Dolphin, The Tides of Time? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Was it an improvement over the first game? Have you played any of the other Echo games? And what are some of your favorite Echo memories? Please leave a comment below and discuss. As always, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Waz Reviews. If you like what you see, why not give my video a like and subscribe to my channel? Tell your friends! Until next time... I guess you boys from Temporal Investigations are always on time. <laughs>